Well, Priyanka Gandhi has raised the poll pitch once again against Narendra Modi as she has gone on to ask the BJP Prime Ministerial candidate to grow up. She said this while campaigning for her brother in Amethi. Take a look. In Amethi, it is Priyanka's thunder. Amethi, a Nehru Gandhi family bastion, is certainly one of the most keenly followed battles this poll season. Although the incumbent MP, Rahul is hoping to get third time lucky from the constituency. His younger sister Priyanka seems to have stolen the spotlight from the former. The Gandhi sign has been extensively campaigning from Amethi, raising a poll pitch for Rahul. And Priyanka has certainly played her cards right. Going in the midst of people on every occasion, she is doing all she can to ensure a thumping victory for Rahul from the Congress stronghold. Priyanka also makes sure to flaunt her pleasant oratory skills with her interactions with the people. यहाँ मेरी परियोजना की बहनें हैं, समूह की बहनें हैं, हैं कितनी? समूह की हैं? अच्छा। Her presence even seems to have irked the BJP. The Saffron Party, following Priyanka's rise in Congress's campaigns, has been launching personal attacks on the Gandhi sign, breaking up the alleged Badra business camps. Today, Priyanka, in a charming self, was in a meeting, and just as expected. It was another day of scathing attacks on the BJP. Priyanka wants Modi to grow up. Yes, the Priyanka Modi war of words continue as the former yet again came all guns blazing at the BJP's PM candidate. Standing up for AICC Vice President Rahul in his own backyard, Priyanka ridiculed Narendra Modi's sarcastic attacks on Rahul. Priyanka slammed Modi, calling his jibes childish. आज उसी दल के बड़े-बड़े सक्षम नेता राहुल जी का मजाक उड़ाते हैं। कभी उन्हें नमूना कहते हैं, कभी उनकी तुलना किसी हासिया भी नेता के साथ करते हैं, कभी उनको शहजादे कहते हैं। तो मेरे मन में ये बात आती है कि आपने तो प्रधानमंत्री बनने की आस रखी हुई है, आस बनाई है, लगाई हुई है। Further, Priyanka took pot shots at Rahul's opponents from Amethi. She said that candidates of other parties cannot bring about development in Amethi since they will not form the government at the center. जो उम्मीदवार यहाँ आते हैं अलग-अलग पार्टियों के सबसे पहले तो आप ये सोचिए कि वो आपके लिए कर क्या पाएंगे? एक तो ऐसे हैं जिनकी ना केंद्र में सरकार है। न प्रदेश में सरकार है और ऐसे भी नहीं लगता कि केंद्र में सरकार आएगी उनकी तो क्या खर्च पाएंगे आप पे क्या ला पाएंगे विकास के में तो एक तरफ वो है और एक तरफ राहुल जी जिन्होंने इतना सारा विकास करा है The Congress's newfound star campaigner did not stop there. It's Priyanka vs Smriti all over again. Three days after Priyanka called BJP's Amiti candidate Smriti Irani an outsider, the Gandhi sign yet again logged horns with the actor turned politician. This time Priyanka called Irani an armchair politician who addresses the media from closed rooms. <laughs> पत्रकारों से बात करती हैं, कहती हैं कि देखो राहुल गांधी का क्षेत्र है, यहाँ बिजली नहीं है। वो इन चीजों को नहीं समझना चाहते कि विकास किस तरह से हो रहा है। Following Priyanka's dig, Smriti Rani took to Twitter to react. In a direct reference to Priyanka, Smriti said that she doesn't live off her family name. From Notanki to armchair politician, seems Mrs. Vadra has a problem defining me. Whatever I am, I have never lived off my family name. Even as Amethi is turning into a hotbed of politics, Priyanka is stealing all the limelight from Rahul, despite the latter being the party's candidate from the constituency. Although Priyanka has only been campaigning in Raibareli and Amethi, the two family pockets, she has certainly risen to be a star campaigner ahead of brother Rahul. Her recent charming yet aggressive campaigns give rise to a big question. Will Priyanka play a bigger role in politics in the time to come? A News 9 report. And meanwhile, trouble seems to be mounting for actor turned politician Pavan Kalyan over his controversial remarks against K. Chandrasekhar Rao of the 
TRS. The Ditchpalli police have registered a case against him as per Nizababad court's directions. Pawan has been charged under sections 506 and 153.1 for his inappropriate comments on KCR. KCR's nephew, Harish Rao too, has sent a legal notice to the actor turned politico demanding an apology. Within two days, this comes in the backdrop of a bitter war of words between Pawan Kalyan as well as K. Chandrasekhar Rao. Pawan Kalyan had gone on to threaten KCR that he will peel off his skin if he speaks negatively about Narendra Modi. In response, KCR had said that he had the capability to chop up Pawan Kalyan to many pieces. And meanwhile, the Tubi from state of Telangana will be witnessing its historic polls uh, tomorrow. So what are the preparations made and what can we expect? Let's find out. Even as Telangana folks and politicals would go into the polls in a euphoric mood, the election commission has made elaborate arrangements to carry out the mammoth polling exercise in a free and fair manner. The region fell silent last evening at the end of a fierce campaigning spell that saw all the major political stakeholders canvassing hard across the 10 Telangana districts. As the countdown begins for the Telangana electorate to give their landmark verdict, authorities were seen fine-tuning the extensive arrangements made in all polling stations and booths. The polling will typically commence at 7 in the morning and come to a tiring finish at 6 p.m. A total of 2 crores, 81 lakhs, 74,055 voters are expected to exercise their franchisee. Of these, male voters account for 1 crore, 37 lakh, 81,276. While there are 1 crore, 43 lakhs, 82,661 female voters besides 2,329 more categorized as other voters. The Election Commission has set up 30,518 polling centres to ensure a hassle-free polling across the region, keeping in with its recent tradition aimed at pre-empting vote rigging and other polling-related malpractices. The poll watchdog has made arrangements for live webcasting of the exercise at 17,000 polling centres. Projectors with giant screens were also installed in all Mandal headquarters, major towns and big villages. The polling can be watched live in these places for a close monitoring of the proceedings. The Andhra Pradesh police also chipped in with its own resources to help the election commission carry out one of the biggest electoral rituals. More than 1.4 lakh policemen and special forces have been deployed in the 10 districts going to polls tomorrow. In Hyderabad alone, about 20,000 policemen will keep a close watch at the polling centres and other sensitive areas. Among the external forces, the State Police Department are using 37 companies of the Central Security Forces. Among eight companies of the Andhra Pradesh Special Police are also being pressed into the poll duty. There will be other civilian volunteers, like those from the NSS, helping the police in their task. Keeping in view the Wednesday polling, sale of liquor has been banned since Monday evening and the prohibitory orders will be enforced till May 1st. The liquor ban is being strictly enforced in all retail outlets, bars, five-star hotels and various clubs. The 2014 general elections would mean enormous significance, both political and historical, for Telangana. A 60-year-old demand for a separate statehood had been a decade-long movement finally bore fruit when the Congress-led UPA ensured the passage of the Telangana Bill in Parliament in March. The region is now waiting in the wings to officially become the 29th state of the country before June 2nd. The voters will seal the fate of candidates in 119 assembly and 17 Lok Sabha seats tomorrow. In all, 1,934 candidates are in the fray and 1,669 of them being in contention for the assembly seats. Any political outfit or coalition of parties reaching the magic figure of 60 seats would be able to form the government in the soon-to-be formed state. Durga Prasad for News 9, Hyderabad. And while well, tomorrow being the seventh phase of election, it will include nine states as well as two union territories with the crucial candidates like Narendra Modi as well as AICC President Sonia Gandhi going into polls. This is one of the most important phases of elections 2014. Take a look. Seventh phase, tale of seven states and two UTs. It's a mammoth battle. 89 constituencies spread across seven states and two union territories will go to the polls on Wednesday. But who are the biggies that you will have to watch out for? 
आंध्र प्रदेश द टी पार्ट ऑफ आर नेबरिंग स्टेट ऑफ आंध्र प्रदेश विल गो इन टू पोल्स टूमोरो A total of two crores, eighty-one lakh, seventy-four thousand, and fifty-five voters are expected to exercise their franchise from seven in the morning to six in the evening. The big wigs of Telangana region in Andhra Pradesh are Union Minister S. J. Pal Reddy, TRS President K. Chandrasekhar Rao, his daughter Kavita, Lok Sabha Party President N. J. Prakash Narayan. former dgp v dinesh reddy former is officer m chayaratan cpi state secretary k narayana and majlis chief asaduddin owaisi gujarat this state is surely an interesting battlefield the reason being gujarat will witness bjp's prime ministerial candidate narendra modi fight it out against congress candidate madhusudan mistri in vadodara Meanwhile his guru and BJP stalwart LK Advani will be contesting in Gandhinagar. One needs to know that Gujarat has maximum of 334 candidates contesting for its 26 parliamentary seats and the electors will cast their vote in a single phase poll. Uttar Pradesh In the state of Uttar Pradesh a keenly watched contest is in Raibareli where Congress president Sonia Gandhi is seeking her third consecutive term her BJP counterpart Rajnath Singh is contesting from Lucknow a seat that has been represented in the past by former prime minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee Also in contention is veteran BJP leader Murli Manohar Joshi who will face the electorate in Kanpur Bihar The seven Lok Sabha constituencies will go to polls in Bihar on Wednesday, but these seven constituencies are known to be backward pockets with high rates of poverty and illiteracy. Well, the prominent leaders in the fray in the seven Lok Sabha constituencies are Sharad Yadav, Hukum Deo Narain Yadav, Ali Ashraf Fatmi, former cricketer Kirti Asad, Pappu Yadav, and NRI doctor Prabhat Ranjan Das. they will fight it out in this key phase for bihar punjab just like the state of gujarat 13 constituencies of punjab will go to the polls in a single phase punjab will witness an extremely tough electoral battle with the congress trying to make its way into the ruling akali dal bjp bastions the key contenders include bjp candidate arun jaitley fighting against congress nominee amrinder singh for the amritsar seat and gurdaspur incumbent mp pratap singh bajwa being pitted against the three time bjp mp and actor vinod kanna jammu and kashmir in jammu and kashmir the balloting will take place in just one constituency srinagar national conference chief is one of the candidates who will be contesting from this constituency west bengal In West Bengal the ruling Trinamool Congress and main opposition Communist Party of India Marxists are the main contenders in the electoral battle. The BJP has meanwhile fielded celebrities like famed music composer Bappi Lahiri from Sri Rampur and journalist turned party spokesman Chandan Mitra from Hooghly. Along with the seven states the two union territories comprising of Dadra and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu will go to polls on Wednesday. Both these union territories will be battling it out for one constituency each. Well, the seven states and two union territories are totally prepared for the seventh phase. It will be interesting to watch how nearly 139 million voters will decide the electoral fate of over 1200 candidates who are in the fray. A news 9 report.